So what's going on in Florida is that Florida has restored voting rights to convicted felons and uh, for most crimes. So in, if in most cases, if you are a convicted felon in Florida and you've served out your sentence, you can get your voting rights restored, which is excellent. Personally, I believe in universal suffrage myself, but mm -hmm. hey, I'll, I'll take this at least for now. Um, what was going on, though, is they wanted, to, the government down there wanted to block felons who had served their time or filled, served out their sentences, whether that was probation or community service or, or jail time. Uh, however, they wanted to block those felons who had not yet paid off their fines or fees. Mm -hmm. That has been overturned, and everybody uh, who, was, who, who applies to have their civil rights restored will be able to vote again legally, regardless of whether they own any debt to the state as, as a result of their crime. Oh, wow. So I think that that is positive news, uh, but it leads in to the, the last story that I have. And by the way, you can check the show notes. Uh, the show notes are right under the video. Click on that link. It'll take you to um, a Google Doc, and you can find links to all these stories so you can follow along and do your own research. Um, right, and I want to give a shout out to everyone who's joining our live stream chat right now. Schulte 100, DCK Punk, good to see you. Good Norman see Kina, you're here. Welcome. Had long time no see. Um, uh, Hemdell's Gate, Max D, and numerous other people who are in the live stream chat. Welcome, everyone, to Hard Lens Media. We appreciate you guys joining us. So now, next story. Well, what's going on is that there's a problem with probationers in this, in this country mm -hmm. um, being sentenced back to jail time. Right. Because they have not been able to pay their various debts connected with their crime or, in some cases, child support. Um, and oh there was boy. just one absolutely obscene case, a man who uh, committed a crime 10 years ago. He's been out of jail for a long time. Uh, he, is not, he has not been able to pay the judge, to pay the court, uh, $1,900 in court costs. So the judge sent him back to jail for one and a half to three years. Hmm. So, uh, okay. I, um, <laughs> so... Again, we need criminal justice reform now more than ever. I mean, how many times are we going to keep saying it? Criminal justice reform, criminal justice reform, criminal justice reform. reform yes. This is why this 2020 election cycle is going to be key. This is why it's important for us to step up and get involved. And look, I'm just going to say his name again one more time. Senator Bernie Sanders has a very strong policy of criminal justice reform. And again, my opinion, I feel that he's the strongest of the candidates to really bring forth real change in this country and i think it's long overdue and all the stories we're covering so far is just proving my point but now we got to move on to a thing i i think a lot of young people people my age are afraid to talk about and that's student debt so yeah we do so we, can, so we were talking earlier about you know the fact that you have people who are in the criminal justice system mm -hmm. who have debts they, they simply cannot pay they don't have the money and of course if they're kept from getting jobs, they really can't get you know get that money. So hopefully there'll be some changes made. But now we're going to come back to this story that's been getting a lot of traction this year about school lunch debt. Oh, my goodness. All right. So as many of you are aware, have heard these stories, there are schools that are engaging in what's called lunch shaming. And that what happens is if a child comes to school, uh, wants to get a hot lunch or needs to get a lunch, and they, they owe money on their student lunch account, um, what will happen is, is that in some cases they've had the lunch, hot lunch, which is on a tray, thrown out because they can't give it to another student. They've actually, the, the lunch lady will throw it out, and the child will be given a cheese sandwich or a piece of fruit or something like that. And um, Can I just interrupt is, yeah. you? Sorry. It, okay, so we have money for the Joint Strike Fighter. We have money to invade foreign countries. We have money to bail out Wall Street, the big banks, and major corporations. We have money to help out the top 1%, mm -hmm. but we don't have money to feed our young people. We no. don't have money to take care of them. And so what's the system we have? Making people feel guilty that they're poor and then throwing away their food and just giving them, what, a cheese sandwich and some fruit? It's disgusting. Well, that, that is what's been happening in a lot of schools. There's been a lot of talk about it. Sometimes private uh, citizens will step up and pay off student lunch accounts, but it doesn't correct the problem. Now, there are many reasons why a child's student lunch account might be in arrears. But in my opinion, this is an issue between adults. This is an, uh, between the parents or the guardians of the child and the school administration. Mm -hmm. And penalizing a child 
for not having the money for lunch is, is, is never acceptable. Well, there's a school district in New Jersey that's taking this one step further. Not only have they declined funds from private individuals who are willing to pay, um, to pay off uh, student lunch debt, they have now, they're now proposing that students who have lunch debt will not be allowed to go on school field trips nor attend their prom. Wow. Okay. Well, make it make people feel guilty even more. I mean, come on. <laughs> what kind of world are we living in where you got to make people feel guilty about all this stuff? No. No, 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 no. This is not right. Okay. Just why? You, you're supposed to, we're supposed to be in a living in a, a civilized society, a society of where we take care of each other, even those that are in much dire situations. Yeah. So just because someone doesn't have money for school lunches, you just ah, can't go to field well, trips. You're, t- you're no going problems, after no the kids. Yeah, you're going after the kids. The kids and, 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 and for an adult it, problem. Again, yeah. it's, it's, it's not on the student. You're, you're putting the kid in a situation that is understandably out of his or her control. Yeah. So you have no right to do this and make someone feel like a second-class citizen. Which is precisely what's happening. Yeah, yeah it's, it's disgusting. It, 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 you know, and, and, but we were talking earlier about class warfare. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how people have been sucked into believing that Mm -hmm. their interests are remarkably different than those of the people who live down or work down the street from them, which is not the case. And that's why I kept on saying to those folks at the Board of Trade who are dropping signs and worse down uh, on on striking teachers, um, your, your, your interests are not that different. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize that. And the same thing holds true with school administrators who want to act as if the interest, their interests as school administrators are remarkably different than those of their students and their yeah, parents. I agree. Come on, we're better than this. We, we have to be better than this.